Welcome back to Zero Tolerance, episode four of Learn to Burn. This month's episode, we're gonna cover uh, challenging features with EDM, and I'm gonna get into some features that are fairly simple, but they're a little challenging to do with EDM. So I'm going to actually make an electrode, we're gonna burn some features, uh, vector burn, subgates, and um, I will show you how it works. Okay, we're here at the mill and we're gonna be building an electrode uh, on a bridge port the way I had to do it years ago. I'm doing this on this machine. This is an old, old style milling machine. Most everybody knows it as a bridge port, but um, this is how it used to be done. I'm doing it this way just to show you no matter what tools you have in the shop, you may not have fancy tools or fancy machines. You can still get through some difficult projects and the best tool we have is our brain. So if we use our brain, think of ways to figure it out, um, we can come up with a, a good solution. Um, so I'm gonna go through a demonstration of cutting an electrode manually, and then going out there and showing you how to create sharp corners on a burn uh, that typically it's, it's not as easy as you'd think it would be to put a sharp corner in a square, uh, very simple, I guess like picture frame style burn. I want to try to explain um, some of the challenging burns that we do uh, with EDM because you're trying to make the exact shape that the customer is giving you or that you have to put into a detail. And it's not always as easy as it looks. Uh, this is actually a, a picture frame type burn that we're going to go over and I'll actually demonstrate out there how to make that happen. To, because the customer wants me to put square corners here in here and for me to make an electrode to do that I, I have to use a, a cutter and this area that's the frame is going to be standing proud so I have to go in there with a with a small cutter so the smallest I can put in there is going to be like a 10,000 diameter uh, cutter you can get five but it, you can't go very deep so there's there's a couple tricks to doing this and they're they're kind of a challenge um, if you haven't done it before a lot, some people used to old school them and they would scrape the corners. We would take the small 10,000th diameter and then actually scrape that corner square, which you can do if you're, um, if you're really good at it and you got patience. Um, but 
typically we, we would chop that electrode into two different electrodes to get that sharp corner. The outside is a different story. To make this sharp, you have to have um, either very small overburn, two thousandths overburn, which you'll end up with technically, this is your square electrode, you're going to have spark, a spark gap of, of two thousandths, let's say, so you're, you're technically going to end up with exaggerated, if we were zoomed up on it, you got a small two thousandths rad in your corner. So that's not perfectly square either. Um, so in the machine, you have the ability to use a, a, an orbit. So we're going to talk about an or orbiting electrodes. Most orbiting electrodes or orbiting settings will just do a circle orbit. And this is just a 2D circuiting, circular orbit. So it just it li literally just goes in a circle, a small amount. So the, whatever your orbit is or your overburn, if your overburn is 2000s, your orbit's going to be 2000s. So if your overburn is 10 thousandths, then your orbit is going to be 10 thousandths. So which ends up creating, if your square electrode is orbiting that much in a circular pattern, you're going to end up with, even if your electrode's sharp, you're going to end up with a 10 thou radius in the corner. So that's not what the customer is looking for. So typically if something needs to be really sharp, you have to either use very little overburn to try to achieve the smallest error possible, or you use some of the settings in the machine which can actually orbit, instead of a circle, it can literally orbit a square pattern, which will turn the overburn pattern, let's say that we had a 10 thousandths overburn electrode, and we, we literally take that trode and we burn all the settings down really small, and then, that, then you can create that, that sharp corner. We're gonna make a square, burn. It's going to be a window shape burn and it's literally going to, I'm, my goal is to make every corner of this burn square, as square as possible uh, with the EDM. So what I had to make on the bridge port I did manually is I made a, because I, I can't make a small radius in the corner and have it come out square, so I, I two-stage this electrode is what I'm trying to show, is I'm going to take the two outside ends and then rotate it 90 and burn it in the same place and it will make a perfect frame square with all the corners perfectly square inside and out. I want to show you the different orbit techniques that we have on the Mitsubishi. Uh, basically right in this section it shows you the options you have for different orbit styles like the ones I was showing on the board. The original one is circle. Uh, it's just down in a circle. Then you have a square option I'll kind of just go through these. A square, a spherical is 3D. So it basically will, in every direction, it's going to be a, the same overburn. And it will create a uh, uniformed offset based on your overburn. So the other options in here, you have um, pretty common ones for doing threads, or not threads, but Allen wrench heads or hexes. Um, there's another one for like a barrel. And depending on the direction and the cone that you have, you can make some really cool shapes, some wedges. But this will direct the overburn to a corner if you're trying to make something sharper with a larger overburn. And that's really what I was wanting to show you on this. So here we're actually, you can see the orbit pattern of the square on the screen as it's going through the motions. All right, I just wanted to stop this just to show you the difference of what we're doing. Um, so the this electrode is basically going to be turning 90 degrees and making that square. And what, what, what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to get the, the burn to go past the corner on both sections, so I end up with a very sharp corner here, 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 and here, all the interior corners. The square orbiting on the machine is actually on the outside, but this inside area, I have to do this in a two-stage electrode, and that's, and that's what we're showing you here. So this is the conclusion of our, of our square burn. And I'm going to grab the electrode out of the holder here and just to show you what I'm talking about. So what I have, if you 
get all the oil out of here. We have every corner on this burn is sharp, as sharp as we can make it. Um, we could probably go a little sharper, but based on the overburn and the finish that I called out on the machine, this is, this literally I should have like a half a thousandth or less of a radius in the corners in and out of this square. So I use this electrode to do to do a burn like this and then rotate it and do the burn like this. And what I essentially did is I blew past both ways on the corner to create super sharp feature, which this is a very simple explanation of what it takes to make those corners, but we've actually done a job that has a lot of sharp corners in it, which I'll show you in a few minutes that we had to do this technique. It's basically staging the electrode so that you make sure you get the features that you need and you don't put any radiuses where they're not supposed to be. This job is one that required the sharp corners and I would like to zoom up on this design and show you where we had a little bit of a challenge to make all these areas sharp. First of all, this job was not cuttable uh, just because they had a lot of sharps on the bottom and around the details but also um, the bottom of this geometry is not flat so with that being the case uh, EDM was the best choice uh, for this operation and I will show you how we made these electrodes um, so that we could keep those features all sharp I like to call this the art and science of designing electrodes um, what we're going to be doing is two-stage, we're going to two-stage a lot of this detail so that we can cover all the areas and overlap them to make sure that those areas that are supposed to be sharp are sharp. As you can see, the yellow and the green um, on this electrode is just showing you where we had to overlap. So there's a lot of geometry that had to be trimmed and um, created to, to make the these features the way we wanted so there, it was very CAD there was a lot of CAD work in this um, job as you can see sometimes we are allowed to get away with uh, putting a rad in certain areas uh, in this particular job our customer required the sharp corners stay in the steel so typically this is what we would do is put a ten thousands um, radius in there and then we could cut this in one electrode but because a customer required that they be sharp, we had to double stage this electrode set to create these sharp corners. I want to show what it looks like if you put a radius right here in this area, which is going to look different than in a 90 degree corner compared to what it's supposed to look like on this other side right here. Because of the way these features come together, you have to have um, an overlap and the way that I did it is based on as much overburn as I can get. The more overburn, if I get 10,000s overburn, it's going to burn faster than 5,000s overburn. The rule of thumb I like to use for the overburn, the largest overburn, is typically the smallest radius found in the geometry that I'm burning. With these electrodes, my goal was to get all of the two-stage sections and only have to have two electrodes to make one complete area so that I didn't have a whole bunch of these large electrodes um, to machine. Okay, so I want to cover some of the things that we have had to work with in the past. Um, and I want to talk about working with what you have to work with because a lot of shops don't have everything you need, but there's always ways to make it, to make it work. Uh, for instance, here's a solution I came up with to do subgates on different angles. Um, pretty basic, but you can get the idea. You can, it, it holds the electrodes or my subgate electrodes in this slot and then I can actually stick them in my angle holder, which I used to use these a lot. I don't use them much anymore, but it allows me to do these kind of vector burn subgates. 
um, pretty consistently and without a lot of cost. <clears throat> so I still recommend using these kind of holders, either a row or three R uh, to do this kind of stuff. But sometimes the, whatever you have to work with, you got to use a square blank or a trode to do something that's not normal. Then that's what, what I recommend you do is come up with a solution, use your brain and, and solve the problem. So I, I don't like the excuses of not having the right tools, the right machines. I've had to work with really old machines and make make good parts out of it. So I recommend that you uh, keep your quality up. Always do a good job regardless of the equipment you have and eventually you'll have good equipment. So. I showed you how the other um, subgates were that I used to use an angle holder for and now we got creative and built in four different angles on one holder using the sunspot holders. So we have 35 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees and 45. So we're able to do all those different angles in the same block. We draw all this in the CAD so we know exactly where it would be and the length of the electrode is critical. So we have that all drawn in there as well. Um, and we've actually gotten measurements off of this so we know right where they're at. But this, this is a huge time saver, uh, being able to put that in the CAD and not having to figure out where those numbers are uh, based on touching a point or trying to pick up a, a, a corner, a theoretical tip. Um, and then I, we have the custom tunnel gate holder, which allows us to go to all kinds of angles, whatever angle we need it to be. But we try to design everything to work around these four different angles. Right now we're burning a subgate in a block just to show you kind of a side view of how that works. This is a vector burn, it's on 45 degrees. Um, and this control we typically only need to put in the start point and end point and then give it a um, you don't even need to give it a direction start and end point and then the parameters for the the electrode itself what you what's the surface contact uh, what kind of burn you're doing and what's the overburn so these we put in on every injection mold well not everyone but almost all of them have some kind of gate and usually they're subgated so that when the part the mold opens, the parts fall off clean. There's nothing to break off. There's no runner, like the old style model model cars that you had to glue together. So subgates are um, a, another word for a, a vector burn. So you can do 45 degrees, basically anywhere from zero to 90 degrees on a vector burn, and that's either straight sideways or or on an angle of some kind, and it could be a compound angle, um, as we have in this this burn going on right now. We're going down on 45 degrees, but we're also tilted 13 degrees rotated in the C axis. So we've had this situation, this is just for showing you how it works, but sometimes our inserts have to go, our, our subgates have to go through a block, break out from one block and then break into another block. Um, and this is just an example of that. <laughs> So this is what the subgate looks like. You can see this pin goes right through. That's where plastic would go in uh, to an injection mold. And here's what a runner looks like with a subgate. Um, this is a, actually a four cavity. It's easier to see. We've got subgates on compound angles. And those are all 30 thousandths diameter subgates. Um, so when you're doing them in, in a four cavity mold like this, you gotta have them exactly within a thousandth of each other diameter wise so that it balances the parts when it fills. Um, so that's a sub game. This concludes our episode four, and I appreciate everybody that's watched our videos. Uh, remember to subscribe and like. Um, like I said, only if you like our videos. Um, next month, we're gonna get into a little bit of cutter selection, different types of machines, what works, what doesn't, um, at least for us. Uh, a lot of people have their preferences for machines um, and cutters, so we are going to dive into that topic, which can be uh, a lot of fun.
Welcome back to Zero Tolerance with Learn to Burn. Practical Machinists. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. A way to make the simple, I don't even know. That's not good, I don't want it. You're gonna have to delete. That. Back to Zero Tolerance. Alrighty. A fixture in this machine, in the machine. Okay, not good, not good. Um, are you videotaping me? Yeah, are you gonna say something? Yeah, I'm gonna say something. 